All right, welcome back, everybody. We are in. This is finals. In it to win it finals. Oh, man. I'm so excited. We've seen these players already today. Uh, we have Whitney versus Josh. And so on Josh's side, we've got the Celesteela, the Tapu Coco, the Snorlax, the Ninetales, the Tauros, and the Garchomp. And on Whitney's side, we've seen the memes. Uh, we've got the Tapu Lele, we've got the Tapu Finny, the Kartana, Arcanine, the Feramosa, and the Ninetales. Uh, Ninetales shared on both sides means that we're basically, if we're going to see a weather, uh, Matt, I think we're going to see one of one weathers. Yeah, actually, different contrast. Ninetales being the superior weather setter today, as we see it in both of the finals. Both of the teams are a little bit different, um, but um, I'm sure Ninetales is going to serve the same purpose anyway. Yeah, so it looks like we saw this out of Josh in, in his last appearances on stream, where he definitely prioritizes keeping his Pokemon safe with this Ninetales, uh, making sure that Ninetales sets up the... Uh, the Aurora Veil. Vale. Uh, one thing that we did notice, I believe, out of the last time that Josh was on stream, is that there's no Focus Sash. Uh, and we just saw Whitney with this Choice Scarf Tampu Lele and this Feramosa, which is unbelievably fast, uh, threatening a lot of offensive pressure against Josh here. And I believe, uh, I don't think we saw the Intimidate go off on the tour. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy, we had talked about this the last time that Josh was on stream, that there was always a chance that if Tauros is on Team Preview, that you have to worry about Anger Point. Uh, and Anger Point means that if Tauros gets critically hit, his attack goes sky high. Oh, never mind. We did see the Intimidate. Unfort. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's unfortunate for everybody. Um, Anger Point... Tauros is absolutely a, a, a crowd favorite. So Tauros going to go ahead and protect himself from that Psychic there. Um, and then it looks like a Poison Jab coming out of Feramosa, doing super effective damage and getting the Poison, but not the KO. Yeah, that shows how bulky Josh's, <clears throat> Josh's Ninetales really is, is that's a Life Orb Poison Jab from the Feramosa is normally a clean knockout. Yeah, and honestly... The, the Intimidate here from that Tauros paying itself dividends, uh, making sure that, that Ninetales is going to survive. Uh, not going to be able to get necessarily another attack off because it's still going to be slower than both the Choice Scarf Lele and the Feramosa, uh, but making it so that maybe, just maybe, this Tauros is going to be able to survive a high jump kick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm... I'm not gonna lie, I'm not fully aware on Tauros's bulk here, but it doesn't look like um, Whitney is um, with the Intimidate. It might, if it doesn't pick up the KO on that Tauros, he doesn't really have a very safe turn here. Yeah, so this Psychic going into Tauros, doing a whole ton of damage, um, and the High Jump Kick connecting once again, and it looks like Whitney has definitely prioritized this Tauros as the biggest damage dealer on the field. Um, Ninetales will have blizzards that'll that'll hit both sides of the field, but instead, knowing that Tapu Lele is choice locked, gonna go for that disable. Prevent Tapu Lele from doing anything but struggling unless it decides to switch out. No, wonderful turn. Um wonderful he did lose his Tauros, which is unfortunate, but he does per he does basically force the switch by Whitney from Tapu Lele here. Yeah, and one thing to notice is that that, that Ninetales, uh, Whitney left it alone, thinking that it wasn't going to do a whole chunk of, of really dangerous damage, um, and it survives there with 1 HP. So if Josh was expecting that it was kind of uh, a KO fodder, and that it was just going to crash and burn here on the second turn, um, still surviving, meaning that he's not going to be able to switch in to the last two Pokemon, so Garchomp comes out here, facing off against Tapu Lele, uh, which again is going to struggle, and Feramosa, which oftentimes carries an Ice Beam. Yeah, that's a very risky switch. Uh, maybe his his Garchomp could potentially just be easy to take it, but that's a very um 
very, very risky switch by Joshua. And it looks like Josh really getting close to time there um, with only three seconds left to make his decision. So now we've got Cartana, a really bold move here, knowing that there could be a Ninetales Blizzard against something as uh, special defensive bulky as Cartana. Oh, that's rough. But the icy wind here, so not a bad decision it looks like. As that's uh, that's gonna lower the Cartana speed, which probably doesn't matter too much because we saw um, that it's more of a slower Cartana. The Feromosa Protect was very smart by Whitney here, as he does prevent his uh, his Feromosa from losing to an icy wind and removing that Nine Tails from the field. Yeah, so Josh absolutely using this Nine Tails to try and set up the rest of the field for all the rest of his Pokemon to try and come in and win the game. Uh, the Icy Wind there, not connecting with the Feromosa, uh, might actually put Josh in a little bit of a disadvantage. But Celesteela coming out here, um, I mean, that's a that's not a bad place. We've seen how bulky this Celesteela is. Absolutely. And um, Josh, uh, saving that for the end, we, don't, we do not know if Whitney has that Arcanine in the back. Yeah, we don't. Um, As a... But as that's just going to, uh, we're gonna just have to see later on in the game. The Cartana actually switching out here, switching in. We do see that Arcanine. There we go. Lowering the attack of both the atta of physical attackers here. So one thing that we've been discussing again all day is uh, preserving information. Um, and so one thing that's kind of interesting here, it well, I guess that solves it right there. Uh, <laughs> knowing that there was a chance that that could be Scarf Garchomp, uh, that's a smart decision on Whitney's side. Uh, again, we've been talking about how how important information is in this game, uh, and Whitney opting to give up a little information, showing what his fourth Pokemon is, but that preserved Feromosa at least long enough to try and get an attack off. Yeah, that was a very important switch, as it allowed the Feromosa to deal around 50% to that Celesteela with the high jump kick, and since that Garchomp, I believe, is the last Pokemon in, we are it's going to be locked into Poison Jab for the rest of the game as mm -hmm. it outsped that Feromosa there. Yeah, that's an obvious tell that that has to be a choice Scarf Garchomp. Uh, but in this position, if you know that Garchomp is locked into the Poison Jab, um, if you're confident that your Tapu Lele can outspeed, uh, you can lock yourself into, into Moonblast or maybe even Psychic. Um, and Moonblast being super effective and boosted by the same type attack bonus uh, should be able to do a huge amount of damage to this Garchomp, potentially. Absolutely. Even with the Aurora Veil, it'll still deal a ton of damage. So we actually see the helping hand here. Oh, baby. Clap, clap, clapping on. And there's the Moonblast outspeeding that Garchomp. So this is a, a very fast Tapu Lele and a, a slightly slower Garchomp. Yeah, it looks like we might have a timid Tapu Lele here. And Celesteela gets the Leech Seed off. That's 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 good, but I do not know if Celesteela can pull this back. Yeah, so you've got Arcanine oops, knocking over water bottles on my end. So we've got the Arcanine, which still has the Flare Blitz, and still has Fiery MZ, which we've seen previously. Um, and then Celesteela, unless it's got Flamethrower, is going to have a tough time dealing with Kartana, because the main damage that we've seen out of Josh's Celesteela comes from Leech Seed, which Carton is immune to. Yeah, if it's um, if it's for example, the substitute variant that doesn't do a lot of damage to the Cartana. There's also other variants such as Iron Defense or um, <laughs> other sets like that. But it all a lot of it depends on if he is the flamethrower. The Aurora Veil is coming in clutch right now for mm -hmm. um Josh, as he might be able to. Uh, come back if he can stall if he can bait out that z move all oh, right there we go out. no protects from the celesteela so we'll have to see if this is able to pick up the knockout yeah we saw in the last round that this was easily able to take out leonard's celesteela but obviously every pokemon can be trained just a bit differently so we'll have to see how Winnie's fire room z arcanine does against josh's very bulky celesteela and that's a pretty clean ko Planes through the Aurora Veil as well. So, Fiery MZ being a wonderful uh, component of Whitney's team. 
Yeah, so looking forward, uh, I mean, Whitney had a pretty dominating performance here in game one. Uh, what adjustments do you want to see from Josh in order to bring him back into this matchup? If I'm Josh, I think, I don't think he necessarily brought the wrong four to this match, but I feel mm -hmm. if um, just letting, um, I don't know if necessarily Tauros was 100% uh, the call. We just kind of saw Tauros use the Intimidate and then it just, uh, it then just got one shot. It was just kind of beast boost fodder for the Faramosa. So if I'm him, I might want to try out um, maybe the Tapu Koko, the Tapu Koko to change the terrain, to threaten the mm -hmm. Kartana and the Arcanine. If it's the Electrium Z, uh, it might just threaten the Oko on the uh, very offensive Arcanine that Whitney has here. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. Um, I mean, even if he decides that he wants to bring Tauros back uh, to intimidate, to protect some of the other Pokemon from Faramosa, uh, if he's got that Tapu Koko, uh, I mean, he's going to have the ability to maintain the the terrain because if we've got a choice scarf tapu lele that electric that electric terrain is going to be able to take over pretty quickly and uh we actually see whitney is comfortable with what he brought he's locked in now uh, josh is just deciding what changes he wants to make that choice scarf garchomp is actually very good in this matchup if he can um pivot it right for the end game but mm -hmm. it under speeding the lele is not ideal Absolutely not. We want Garchomps with choice scarves to be able to outspeed everything. And when they get outsped by something, it's pretty devastating. Oh, buddy. I'm so excited. This is game two of the finals of the Collector's Cash mid-season showdown in Kansas City. And we, so we see got Tails Coco from Josh Adams, and we see the Faramosa... Tapu Lele from Whitney's side of the field. Yeah, so this is a pretty pretty similar layout. Um, I think they were on the opposite sides for Whitney last time. Uh, but still, uh, seeing that Tapu Koko adjustment that we talked about earlier, that Tapu Koko is going to win that terrain war. One thing that Whitney needs to be careful of is he can he can take out the Tapu Koko and he can take out the Ninetales, but he can't take out both here. So he's going to have to decide which one is more important to KO. Yeah, and Faramosa and Tapu Lele should be able to outspeed that Tapu Koko, but I mean, even so, both sides, they've got a pretty good advantage, uh, but we've seen that Ninetales is unbelievably bulky. Yeah, yeah, we saw how much damage the minus one poison jab, and it'll be, it'll be close to see if the neutral poison jab KOs the Tapu Koko has to be fearing the Poison Jab as well. But the Ninetales, we saw it was Light Clay, and a lot of those variants don't carry the Protect. So if um, Josh called this turn right, it could be very uh, troublesome. Yeah, so it looks like a Dazzling Gleam coming out here from that Tapu Lele. Um, doing a good chunk of damage to Tapu Koko, but obviously not very much to the Celesteela here. Oh, wow. Um, Faramosa going down immediately to that Tapu Koko. Yeah, beautiful switch by Joshua, predicting that he was going to remove the Nine Tails from using Light Clay and was able to just pick up the first KO on one of the bigger threats to the team with the Faramosa because we saw how much it did versus um versus the Tauros in the last game and the Nine Tails and it just racked up beast boosts. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting to watch how just one minor adjustment, switching one Pokemon out, can change the the synergy that a team has. So we see the Tapu Koko coming in uh, from Josh, and then changing that entire first turn uh, from being kind of a snowball effect in Whitney's favor to now being a 4-3 lead for Josh. I really like the adjustment that Josh made by bringing the Tapu Koko here. Um, Josh is kind of in kind of a weird spot right now, though, because we know the Dazzling Gleam will kill. We know that the Arcanine does have the Fire AMZ to mm -hmm. so potentially just get a double knockout this turn. So it makes you wonder what um, what Josh has in the back other than Celesteela if he thought this was his best opportunity to win. So we've got the Dazzling Gleam coming back out from Tapu Lele. It, it is going to be able to take the KO on Tapu Koko. Um, and so Whitney looks like he's calling that protect and not wasting 
that fire EMZ on a protect. And that was extremely smart because um, the fire EMZ, it probably is just enough to pick up the knockout. So it'll deal around 25%, which means that the Celesteela can take another Flare Blitz and potentially get Leech Seeds rolling. Yeah, and it is... Um, we didn't see the, the Aurora Veil come out from that Ninetales at all, did we? No. Because that switch... Uh, yeah, I think that one switched out. Yeah, because we've got 3-0, and we just lost the Tapu Coco. So Ninetales is still in the back for Josh. Uh, but we do have our Garchomp here without an Intimidate from Whitney's Arcanine. So this is a pretty good position for this Garchomp to be in. Um, but we've got the Helping Hand coming back in and if this taking is enough it. To kill, if this is enough to kill the Garchomp, this could be uh, very bad for... What a powerful Tapu Lele, uh, but not quite enough with the Invisible Focus Sash. Uh, able to do a lot of damage. Oh my goodness. And we know that Arcanine has that Fire MZ, so there's no Pinch Berry to recover. Um, and then now we see a Flamethrower coming out of that Celesteela that Josh hadn't revealed in Game 1. So just more information that was hidden from Game 1. And so that, if, if for example, that Whitney does have that Kartana in the back like he brought, that could be very bad. <clears throat> that could be very bad for that Kartana. Yeah, and we do see the Hail finally picking up the, the Garchomp, which survived with that uh, non-existent Focus Sash at 1 HP. Uh, but the Hail coming in, which Josh unfortunately set for himself to take out his own Garchomp. Uh, but, I mean... That's not a bad position for Whitney to be in. Uh, yeah, he lost a, a couple Pokemon, but I mean, at least there's no more Scarf Garchomp now. Oh, so it's, we have just the Kartana in the back. That looks like we're going to be going to game three. I don't think Sacred Sword will be enough to pick up the KO. Yeah, it'll be really tough for Kartana to try and survive a Flamethrower, even if this is an Adamant Celesteela. Uh, Kartana has quite literally paper special defense, uh, goes up in flames relatively quickly. And while he would be able to take out the KO with uh, Smart Strike, it looks like Josh uh, outspeeds with Ninetales, because we've seen that this is a fairly slow Kartana, so there's no real speed tie. And even with that critical hit with the, the Sacred Sword not able to clear out that Celesteela, so, and Joshua right. will we'll take game, game two. On to game three. As it should be, a finals without a game three is just not quite as exciting. So at this push. point, it looks like Josh made a really good adjustment. Um, that Tauros, he saw that it wasn't doing quite as much, uh, not quite as much of a value-added Pokemon for him against Whitney. Um, and then Whitney... Whitney, it looks like he chose basically the same setup that he did previously. Um, is there an adjustment that he needs to make in your mind? The Whitney, uh, the Kartana didn't really do a whole. Josh decided to the same. Before. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know necessarily how much that the Kartana offers, because the Celesteela has just a very fine way of dealing with the the Garchomp is the choice scarf, so you're not going to really threaten the Coco as well. Just getting off a of quick Thunderbolt, for example, would be very huge. And the Ninetales, we already saw that it outspeeds with the Blizzard, so it could just deal a ton of damage to Whitney's team. Yeah, and so I wonder how uh, Tapu Finney would do in a situation like this, where if Whitney can clear out the Tapu Coco, there's really not a whole lot on Josh's team that's able to deal with that Tapu Finney. Absolutely, and um, it all depends on the Finny set. Uh, I know we saw we saw the Scald Silk Protect set, but that fourth move was not revealed. So if it is something like the Moonblast, it could threaten the Garchomp very well. All right, we are going into game three of the Collector's Cash mid-season showdown, which oddly enough is being played out in a bar. <laughs> Collector's Cash being a great venue, but uh, did close a little bit earlier. Uh, so they had to move everything over to a new location, so everybody is playing in uh, a slightly different location. But a fantastic stream, a fantastic set of teams that we've seen, and it looks like Josh 
has made a slight adjustment, as well as Whitney. <laughs> I'm being updated in my ear that we are in a pizza place, not the bar next door. <laughs> so we're able to grab some food while we're finishing up the matches. Uh, Matt and I are, are phoning this one in um, via, via Discord, which is pretty fun. Um, so now we've got the Arcanine bringing out the Intimidates, uh, intimidating this Garchomp, and we've seen that this is a Choice Scarf Garchomp, so not wanting to Earthquake the, the teammate Tapu Koko, uh, and then Helping Hand coming from Arcanine, it, if he focused into this Celesteela with a Moonblast, uh, oh, this is a, whoa, Wait, he made the read. wow, what a great read, and the critical hit on top, uh, Whitney making a great call there, uh, knowing that Garchomp wasn't necessarily going to want to stay in on a, a Helping Hand Moonblast, that's just, oh man, what a, 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 what a great decision by Whitney, uh, punishing punishing that switch just a little bit because Garchomp wasn't able to do anything. Um, Celesteela not able to do anything. And then Capo Coco just being taken out immediately. Removing one of the more disturbers uh, that Josh had in the matchup for that Faramosa if he decided to bring it in the back. That was a phenomenal turn. Yeah, so helping hand on the Arcanine just paying huge dividends. Uh, and then Tapu Le or not Tapu Lele, uh, Celesteela sitting here now going for a protect, Tapu Lele opting to Moonblast into uh, Ninetales, and Ninetales going for that Arroyo Veil, trying to bulk everything up just a little bit more uh, and trying to survive things. And we do see the Z move come out into the Arcanine. We'll see if he targeted the... <laughs> we'll see if he made the correct prediction and targeted the... Uh, nine tails, but if it's going into the Celesteela Protect, that's not going to be doing much damage. Yeah, that's going to be reduced by a huge amount. It is going into that Celesteela, so it's going to do some damage, uh, but obviously, maybe 20%. That's thanks to the Protect dropping it by six stages, and uh, the Aurora Veil increasing its defense by double. Uh, and that was yeah. a good beat by Joshua giving the Celesteela more longevity in the set. Uh, you still have to like Whitney's position, though. Um, neither Pokemon on Josh's side of the field really threaten the Arcanine too much, so Arcanine can get a KO on the Ninetales if it wants, and then pin the pin the Garchomp for the late game. Yeah, and we've seen in previous games uh, that the Garchomp is slower than the Tapu Lele, so Whitney is going to try and keep that around so that he can basically guarantee a, a nice clean knockout and we're seeing the icy wind again from josh who's looking to try and set this up for for the late game absolutely the icy wind will lower the speeds whether or not that'll matter for the late game is to be determined we do see the arcanine go for the flare blitz and that picks up the nine tails bring it down to 4-2 right now in whitney's favor yeah and garchomp behind the aurora veil isn't going to take nearly as much damage from Kartana, uh, but that Heavy Slam actually doing a surprising amount of damage, given that we've seen that this Kartana is relatively slow, uh, and Kartana has some pretty good defensive bulk. Um, I'm actually really surprised with how much that Heavy Slam did, but Kartana is a pretty lightweight Pokemon. Yeah, it would be a base, I think it's, I believe it's base 100, but it is a resist. We do see uh, Josh bring back his final mon in the match it is going to be that Garchomp and we're going to have to see what uh what <clears throat> Whitney decides to go for here and as we've seen previously uh we know we've got the Aurora Veil um and that's going to protect the Celesteela from too much Flare Blitz damage and we've seen that Arcanine has the Helping Hand which can help out Tapu Lele or in this case even the Kartana um but that if he decides to go for something like that uh, he might put his Arcanine in a position to get knocked out by Earthquake here. And that is why I guess we see the Arcanine get switched out. It is going to be into that Pheromosa. Interesting. And uh, as we do see the Garchomp just freely go for the Earthquake. And Kartana should take a good chunk of damage here. 
but it looks like it is going to survive, albeit barely. Um, and then Faramosa, while not being known as a particularly bulky Pokemon, because of that resistance, uh, is not going to take too, too much from that Earthquake. But it looks like that Heavy Slam should be able to take it out, um, and there it goes. So now we're going to see an attack boost from Celesteela here um, with the endgame of Tapu Lele and Arcanine uh, against this Celesteela and Garchomp. So we are going to have to see if Celesteela can, um, Celesteela Garchomp can hold on. We do know that that Lele does outspeed, and I believe that this range can threaten the KO with the Moon Blast. Yeah, so at that point, if this Celesteela, I mean, this is kind of down to a, a little bit of, of prioritization on Josh's side if he wants to try and stay in this. Is he going to be able to do enough damage to this Arcanine? Especially now that we've got an Intimidate coming out from Arcanine into both Garchomp and Celesteela. Um, what other moves is Josh going to have? Is he going to try and go for that Leaf Seed endgame against Arcanine? Um, I mean, is that, that Aurora Veil going to hang on and keep him in this game? Uh, that's, a, that's a lovely question. Um, I think if you're Josh, you have to prioritize killing the... Um, well, you don't even have to really prioritize killing the Tapu Lele here. We do see the Tapu Lele get the Helping Hand boost. We're going to see what it's going to go for. It is the Moon Blast onto that Garchomp. Which should be more than enough to take it out. Um, and at this point, like like we were alluding to, um, Josh had a decision where he could try and set up the Leech Seed endgame against Arcanine, or go immediately for the Heavy Slam knockout against Tapu Lele, um, and that's what he went for. Increasing his attack, the extra stage that Arcanine had dropped it down, um, everybody taking just a little bit of hail damage here, and so now we've got the Arcanine Celesteela endgame. Uh, Aurora Veil should have a couple more turns left so josh might be fairly confident in that the the flare bliss survivability uh whitney burned the the fire z on a protect on celesteela which did a, a little bit of damage but not too much so <sighs> it's a very particular know. end game um as he might if it all depends on if joshua's celesteela can take um, one Flare Blitz enough to recover with the Leech Seed. We do not know the calcs here, but um, if he can, Josh will win this game. If Whitney doesn't, Whitney will win. Whitney actually stalling out, going for Protect here to try to just um, see what Josh is going to do. Josh actually opts for the Heavy Slam. That's really interesting. Yeah, and we see that the Hail stops this turn. Um, and so we saw that, that Aurora Veil on the turn timers uh, we were at turn four of Aurora Veil, so Whitney maybe not knowing uh, whether or not that was going to be a um, a light clay nine tails, maybe trying to stall things out just a little bit, um, and now he can go for the flare blitz fairly freely, um, knowing that he's not going to get a, a good chance of a double protect here. We'll just have to see how much this heavy slam does to the Arcanine if it up the KO this. And that is the game, wow. That is a very strong Celesteela. Uh, that is through resistance with uh, an Intimidate or two. Uh, and Josh Adams, your collector's cash mid-season showdown champion. Very well played by Josh in that set, preserving his Celesteela for the end game and especially baiting out that Fiery MZ, which ultimately um, just gave him such an advantage an incredible set, um, very good adjustments on both sides. You know, keeping everything alive on on Josh's side and baiting everything in for that Celesteela endgame, everything was just planned out pretty well to a T. So congratulations to both players. Um, absolutely phenomenal sets that we've seen today. Um, and then showing off some of the strength of the Midwest. All right, guys, we appreciate you guys all coming out to watch this Collector's Cast Mid-Season Showdown. Um, <clears throat> we are going to uh, actually, I think we are done. Uh, Josh and Whitney have shaken hands, and that is the entire tournament. 
we appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, I'm Matthew Jackson, um, and I was commentated. Uh, Franklin Lewis commentated with me today. And um, do you have any? Do you have any last comments, Abos? No. Uh, a beautiful tournament. Other than, uh, other than that. Well, I said no, and then I'm giving you comments. So anyway, beautiful tournament. Thank you for running everything. Uh, shout outs to Leonard. Uh, who's been doing some of the AV for us while trying to play his own tournament. Um, and thank you to Collector's Cash for allowing us to stream at the venue. Collector's Cash is a, a pretty fantastic venue out in the Kansas City area. Um, if you guys are ever in the area while they've got something going on there, I highly suggest that you check it out. All right. And with that, we are going to close. Um, we thank you guys all for watching, and we'll see you next time.